This is Brent with Likens Motorsports, and this is our brand new uh, Coyote block. So I snagged this uh, several weeks ago after our core uh, Coyote engine uh, was just in too rough a shape. It had gotten so much water in it that it's pretty much trashed inside. So uh, these are about $1,100 new. So to get a brand new engine block, um, aluminum for that um, is, is a pretty good deal. They come uh, pre-machined and we've already checked uh, the bores out and they're nice and round and straight. So we're in good shape. I did have uh, the block a line honed with ARP fasteners. Uh, it comes from Ford with torque to yield fasteners. So that's not gonna work if you plan on doing anything more than once, but um, we got ARP fasteners in this one. Block is really, really uh, stout. They put a lot of horsepower through these and uh, we're gonna attempt to uh, get this block prepped today and maybe some bearing clearance checks, some things like that. Just a quick overview. Pretty, uh, pretty wild to look down in here and not see a cam tunnel. That's a totally different scenario than what I'm used to looking at. So it's uh, basically six bolt mains, one, two, three, four, five, six. Pretty beefy on, on that end. Um, I think I've talked about this in the past. Here are the cylinder vent holes. So it goes all the way through on each side. You can see my finger sticking through there. Through here, through here. So that's the aid in uh, not only block ventilation, but cylinder ventilation. So if you have a hole that's near, uh, near the cylinder, each cylinder can scavenge off of the next one. So you can actually pull, I wouldn't say pull vacuum, but uh, you can pull the air from around one piston and give it a little bit of help since there's uh, less drag associated with that cylinder. A lot of new blocks are like this, your modular four blocks, uh, LS, late model Hemis. We do this to um, to early factory blocks too. I do this to a lot of FE stuff. And it takes a good deal of work. Um, you have to drill through the front of the block and um, use a, um, a guide and, and drill through and a hole saw. So it gets pretty involved, but all of this, all the new stuff is, is already done. Uh, let's see what else I can show you. Thrust bearing is in the back and it uses a traditional bearing with a thrust washer <laughs> to set the clearance. Uses piston oil squirters. This is what uh, this hole and this hole is for. This is uh, right, up, well, it'd be right below the main oil gallery. And each squirter has uh, Looks like a little check valve in it. And just puts, just goes in like this. And when you shove it down in there and bolt it down, you get a nice little stream of oil uh, towards the bottom of, of the piston on each side. And the later model blocks uh, from the factory do not use these. I think this is a Gen 1, possibly a Gen 2, I'm not for sure on that, but the Gen 3 Coyotes do not use that. <laughs> which I'm not going to use it either. I bought uh, a set of uh, modular Mustang racing uh, covers that have an O-ring seal around the uh, the oil port and just cover everything nicely um, with a naturally aspirated build. Um, really don't see any need in, in anything shooting uh, oil at the bottom of the piston to cool it down. Even the Gen 3 Coyotes with 12 to 1 compression, um, they, Ford did not deem this necessary for, for the newer engines, so they didn't do it. So uh, let me get this uh, flipped over and you can see the top of it. This thing is stupid light. 
which is nice. Uh, I'm used to working with a lot heavier stuff, but uh, let me get it flipped over and we'll show you the top end. All right, these are uh, your, I think these are head drains. Uh, these go all the way down to the bottom, the crankcase. Spray on cylinder finishes. It does look a little funky, I will give you that. But nice cross hatch from, from Ford, and the bores are straight and round, which is good. Nice and clean everywhere. So these blocks use a, a rear uh, rear main seal cover. So you can get the crank in and then everything bolts onto the back of the block. It's got two dowel pins um, right there and right there to locate it. So I'm going to go ahead and start, um, this finish looks rougher than a cob, but it's actually very smooth. I don't know what they use to, to, to deck the blocks with, but just got some tooling marks in it. But uh, we're going to start a little bit of prep. Um, we'll start by getting the uh, cylinder head dowels in. So Ford sends a nice um, hardware kit with all the uh, piston squirters, uh, cylinder head dowels, uh, your timing chain guide dowels. This goes in the rear of the block where the main oil gallery is. This is the front um, bell housing dowels and the dowels for uh, timing cover and the rear uh, main seal cover. So we'll start with the, uh, the bell housing, or I'm sorry, with the uh, cylinder head dowels. Then we'll do our belt housing down. Then we'll start the dowels for our rear main seal plate. The biggest, the biggest part of this is getting the stupid little things started straight so you can't get the thing. All right, this is our rear gallery plug. We're gonna use a little bit of green Loctite this is a slave retaining, uh, sleeve retaining compound. Uh, aluminum expands. We don't want that to get away from our uh, plug. The uh, the rear main seal cover kind of puts a, a spot behind this so it can't come out, but we don't want it moving. If you notice, if you look back in here, uh, it's got a shoulder that you drive it up on. So we're going to put just a little bit of green Loctite on it. I heard it hit solid there. Now I wanted to put that one in first because I'm gonna get this thing on the engine stand here in a second. And I'm gonna kind of uh, run some lacquer thinner through the entire block, but I don't uh, want to hinder myself from having, you know, I have to take it back off the engine stand to drive this plug in. So I can do whatever I need to do with this plug in. So that's the reason I put it in there. So we've got two dowels for uh, our timing chain uh, guides. The short one goes up here. And the long one goes up here. And then I'll set those um, with a brass drip. Okay, our next um, 
Then we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and get a, a quick bearing clearance check. Go ahead and screw in our uh, ARP main studs. I'm gonna check the front and the back. That's what I usually do, just to get a good idea of, uh, of where we are. We're gonna be checking with these cleavite bearings. Uh, I got X bearings because uh, I wanna have these coated, so uh, we'll probably need a little bit of extra clearance. We'll have to see how it goes here. Um, here's how the rear uh, thrust bearing sets up. So you've got this traditional style bearing and then the piece that keeps it takes up the end plug. All right, we got our bearing in there, bearing in our main cap. Right, here's a shot of the uh, main caps on with the ARP fasteners. So, um, we'll double check to make sure I'm telling you right on this, but I believe if I'm correct, so we got the, the lower thrust bearing. We're going to add that piece right here when we put the engine together for good. Um, most of your thrust load is pushing this way. So that's why they want you to put this in there and yeah, I'm pretty sure it, it'll sit kind of like this right here. But I'll double check all that. Like I said, I'm green when it comes to uh, Coyote stuff. So we'll see how everything works out. Um, yeah, there's no notch for that uh, finger on that uh, spacer. So I'm pretty sure I'm correct. So ARP wants us to tighten all of them to 20, then all of them to 45, and then um, go back and tighten 11 through 20 to 80 pound feet. 11 through 20 are these inner ones. So we're gonna go, just while we're checking clearances, we're gonna go 20 on all, 45 on all, 80 on the big middle ones, and then 45 on my side bolts that that I've put in. Here's our crank. And if you remember this from when we took the engine apart, this was a nasty old burnished oil mess and it cleaned up really, really nice. A um, couple of soaks in, in the hot uh, jet wash cleaned the oil off of it and then a polish on the, on the journal set it nice. What surprised me is it took a little bit of metal to balance. So um, I guess it was the dome pistons that uh, added a little bit of weight. I didn't even compare the weights between the old parts and the new parts, but it needed metal. Um, it needed metal on both ends. You can see a little piece down there. But uh, we're gonna get some uh, measurements. I'm gonna measure uh, the front and the rear main journals, and we're going to make a determination on where we need to be for bearing clearances. Um, let me get a measurement on this, and then we'll do that first. I think, I know the rod journals are 2086. I uh, can't remember what the mains are. I'll get a measurement, and then we'll talk about bearing clearances. All right, so we're measuring 26570, two inches, 657 thousandths, zero tenths on the main journals. So I want to be somewhere around the 2627 main bearing clearance hot. Uh, this is an aluminum block, and we'll suppose that the mains will grow about a half thou uh, when the block gets hot. So we're going to aim for around two inches. Uh, or I'm sorry, two thousandths on, on the main bearing clearances. And uh, I have uncoated bearings, so we'll get our preliminary check and then see what we need to do with the bearings to get us at two thousandths cold. All right, so get our bore gauge in here. 
So we've got about three thousandths, two tenths on that front journal. So I would, at this point in time, these are X bearings. So let's think about this. Um, three thousandths and two tenths uncoated. I would drop about a half thou clearance with them coated. So that would be about two inches and seven tenths. Um, and then we need to drop it probably another half thou uh, to allow for the aluminum block that would get us down around two one two two. So what I need to do is buy a set of standard bearings, mix half and half, um, half standard, half X, check it. And then if we're down around, you know, two thousand six seven tenths something like that, then I can send everything in to be coated. So we got a game plan and um, we'll move on from there. All right, so while I'm at it and I've got all my measuring tools out, I thought I would go ahead and check bearing clearances on the rods. So these are Molnar rods and uh, these set up at, um, they torque at 30 pound feet plus 60 degrees, pretty typical for um, Molnar stuff. Rod journal on a modular forward is two inches and 86 thousandths. We are at two and a half thousandths. Um, so I think what I'll do, let me think about this. If I go um, coated, it would put me under two. I don't want to be under two. Um, I'd like to be at about two and a half thousandths. So probably have to order an X set of bearings and then do a mix and match. These are just standard H bearings, narrow. Um, if I order an X, I can mix and match and get me up to, um, what was it again? This is very hard to do one-handed. That would put me up to about three, and then I would come back down to two and a half with uh, with the coating. So I've got some bearings to order, and uh, we'll get to go through all this again. Here's some other goodies we got. This is our Aviaid um, oil pump adapter. So if you remember, we're going to be using an external uh, wet sump pump. So that would mount to right there. And then we have our Canton uh, remote filter adapter for a Gen 1 and Gen 2 Coyote. So that would mount like that. So we are well on our way. Here is the um, mandrel adapter to run the pulleys and everything off of. We are well on our way. Um, so next order of business will be to get the correct bearings ordered and check the bearing clearances again. Once that is done, the crank is balanced. Um, just need to file fit the rings and uh, I can just assemble the short block. I've already hung number one and number six piston on the rods. I don't want to go any further than that in the event that we have piston and valve clearance issues. I have not ordered the cams yet. So that's, uh, that's a pretty big ticket item. Um, but I'll, I'll have to get those ordered in order to, uh, to get really past the next hurdle. But, uh, we'll talk about that later, but, uh, just a few, uh, Coyote things and, uh, a road that I've never traveled, but, uh, I'm learning some stuff on the way. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. If you want to see more Coyote stuff, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe button. Let me know, uh, in the comment section, what you think. And uh, remember, we're pushing for two horsepower per cubic inch. Um, so, can't remember exactly what these are. Maybe three, I don't know. I'll have to do the math. But, uh, well, let's do the math right now. Let's see. It is a 3.661 bore. 18305 1.8305 times 8 
times pi times our stroke, which is 3, 650. So 307 cubic inches, two horsepower per cube, would be 614 horsepower. I think we can do it. All right, y'all stay tuned and see. Uh, it may be a little while, but we'll keep chipping away at it and uh, you guys can see it. All right, talk to y'all soon. Be good.